It has often been stated that there is safety in numbers. And this is often why people seek to be with others, to find that safety in such things as community or in family. With safety, we have this idea of security. And in essence, everyone is seeking security in one form or another. That's a pretty natural thing to do. Without security and without safety, we can't really do very much. We're just always in a state of fear then. So safety, it very much seems, is a top priority. In this reality and probably in any instance, anywhere. Go throughout all of the cosmos, if if you will, as an example, and... Any species of any kind would be seeking safety as the number one priority, security. So to not be secure is to be insecure, and that's very much linked with fear. So if we're in a constant state of fear, then we can't really do very much except be focused on that fear. And if we're just focused on fear, then how are we to find out anything about ourselves, who we truly are? We're just in a different type of prison, non-stop. So security and safety really is essential, not to the point of being ridiculous, like wearing all these masks while you're alone driving in your car, as everyone has witnessed in the last few years and still does. These types of safety measures and security measures have nothing to do with safety or security, actually. Meaning, just to feel secure within oneself, to not be in that constant state of fear and panic and overt worry. As if there's someone always around the corner that's going to come and get you. So if you're in that constant state of fear, that's no good. And the only reason that one isn't is because of this idea of safety. And that is often found in the safety of numbers, as it's always been said, around others. Or through such things as systems being in place. The systems of this place obviously offer a lot of security for people. There's the security of, say, food. So there's grocery stores as a good example, which offers that type of security. You can always be certain that there's going to be food at the grocery store. At least that's the perception that's been created by the systems that are in place. And when one feels secure in that, one believes that those systems will always be in place. Because if one starts to perceive that they're not... Well, then that's insecurity and that's fear. And if anyone suggests such an idea might be possible, well, you're a fear monger, obviously. You hate the system. You hate the things that offer security. And that's just one example. There are many such examples of the systems that are in place in this reality that afford an individual or communities that type of security. But what I want to get into in this message is what real security is when you take away those numbers in regards to ultimates and the power of those ultimates. And of course, I always go back to the concept of death. And what is one's power over death or what is a community's power over death? We see if safety is found in numbers... Well, how come all of these numbers cannot stop that ultimate force known as death? You can have an entire community of people saying, we do not wish that individual to die, and yet that individual dies from a disease, let's say. So we find that no matter how many people there are trying to stop that ultimate force from taking over an individual, the force ultimately wins. The ultimate wins. And all of the people had no power over that ultimate. So therefore, 
the individual is left in a very insecure position despite the numbers. So when we look at it in terms of ultimates, we see that there's no safety in numbers. There's no security in numbers when it comes to the biggest things that have the most power over everything. And so it's a big insight. It's a big realization to come to. And a lot of people do not want to face that. Most people want to conceptualize that they find their safety around their family, even when facing death, that somehow their family members are going to have a say in terms of what happens to you as an individual when it comes to death. And so the illusion of that perception creates a buffer of security. But of course, the truth of the matter is that we must face these immensities alone and no one else has any power over these totalities whatsoever, despite any perception that they do or that they have any involvement. We must face these things as individuals alone. This is why going into the aspect of the threshold of choices and the choiceless thresholds that we face is so very important because it very much is linked with these individual consequences that have to do with ultimates where there is really no security outside of our individuality we cannot rely on anyone else for what happens to us as an individual despite how much your family or friends may want to protect you from these things. And that's true. Family and friends obviously want to protect their loved ones from things such as death. Which is why the anagram of death is hated. Of course death is hated. It's the most hated thing ever. So I'm not sure if anyone out there realized that. But again, the tell is in the word. Of course it is, as with everything of this system. So when it comes to choices, when it comes to facing these immense powers, it doesn't matter how big the crowd you're around is. It doesn't matter how many family members or friends are around you. They have no power against these forces. Just as much as you might want to have power over these forces to ensure that nothing bad happens to your friends or family or neighbors and so on, of course you want the best for them. And that's a good thing. But the full weight of the truth is that you don't have any power. None of us, none of us does. That's just the fact of the matter. Each of us must face these immensities as individuals. And that's a tough realization. We've wanted to buffer ourselves from that insight, from that truth. It is a heavy truth want to create new age philosophies as if we all collectively create this reality and that's just a farce as well all we can do is face what's in front of us and make choices but we didn't create this reality not one of us created this we are choice makers that's what we are. And it's our choice how to even face those choices. Whether we face them with courage or with trepidation and fear. And to face these immensities as individuals is very daunting to say the least. So this is what I mean by 
facing what is to come with heart? Or is one going to face it through the mind and just panic and be a part of the chaos, if you will? Because that's what the mind is. It's just a chaotic mess. It doesn't respond to anything. It just reacts. And its reaction is hasty and nonsensical. It's not a good idea to get caught up in the crowd. It really never is. And when things are calm, this is the time to actually go into that. Am I caught up in the crowd, in doing things the way that the crowd is doing? Or am I doing them as an individual, which is how I'm going to have to face these ultimates as I keep repeating? And what is important bears repeating, and repeating often. Oftentimes, we miss things the first go-around, or the second, or third, or fourth. So, we repeat them. And then maybe on the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time, who knows? Tenth time, twentieth. We see something that we never saw before. That's why repetition in a lot of things is important. Not the whole reincarnation cycle. I'm not saying that whatsoever. This is a death cult system that constantly wipes us down to nothing over and over again. There's no help with that. I'm not talking about the reincarnation system. This is the worst thing that could happen to anyone. It's a cancer toilet, as I said. We need to leave. We need to get out of this for good. But when it comes to the heavy weight of the truth, yeah, it bears repeating, and a lot sometimes, because things are missed. This is why I say that the filters are strong. The filters are so strong that they sieve so much of the message so that it's not received. Again, it's a phonetic tell. Yeah, I reiterate things many times. And I do this even for myself. I do this for myself and I do it inside of myself. Absolutely. Within the heart. Go into the heart and see what it has to say. Obviously, I've said this many times and it is the truth. You, No one needs to listen to me if they're actually listening to their heart whatsoever or just in general no one needs to listen to me period just go go right down that route unsubscribe again follow no one do not follow me again i'm a homeless bum so i'm nobody to listen to i'm just a voice talking into the the vacuum of space if you will yeah, the the FM radio of this Satanist YouTube. But yeah, when it comes to choices and ultimates and those thresholds, we need to face them as individuals. And that's what this message comes down to. You can't face these choices as a group. It's just not possible. And many will try to convince you that it is possible or that they have some say in regards to it or that they'll be able to protect you in some way. And that's just not the truth at all. Really go into it. Who can protect you from death? Can your parents? Can your friends? Can those closest to you, your husband, your wife? Anyone? From ultimates. Or do you have to face these alone as an individual? Which, when faced with that cold hard truth, and it is, it's a heavy truth to take in. Are you going to be able to see that? And stand in courage to face these choices, to face these immensities? Or do you kowtow 
and become a coward and then just fall into the arms of the crowd who will disappear one by one. That crowd will be dispersed and they will disappear one by one until they're all gone and you end up as an individual anyways. That's what consequence is all about. And consequences inevitably are ultimate. That's the point. So these are the things I wanted to get into with this message. Take care. Talk again soon.